Hey guys, when I first started playing Hoi 4, there were three paths that I really liked. The US, just their historical democratic path. The UK, specifically the King's Party path. And Italy. But now I am extremely excited to relive those days when I just started playing Hoi 4 and play as Italy, but in the new DLC by Blood Alone. And this video is sponsored by Paradox. There's a link in the description and pinned comment where you can get any play the DLC for yourself, so make sure to check that out. One of the first things that you can notice is the select random country button, which I've seen a lot of online tools that will randomly select a country for you, so now you won't have to go find an online wheel spinning application. So this focus tree is now very big, and it has a really cool ending format here that's reminiscent kind of of the new Soviet tree, where there are multiple paths here that lead to this same mutually exclusive branch at the bottom. So we can't yet do our political branch. It looks like these will be auto-completed depending on how these decisions turn out, if we can complete them or if they fail. And it looks like the war will slowly escalate, though if things go well, we'll hopefully end the war before it escalates at all. Though I do kind of want some army experience, so maybe not. In the meantime though, we will do our industry path. I'm going to be risky and not do Ethiopian war logistics. Hopefully we'll be able to win the war without it. If things take a turn for the worse though, I'll do that and feel stupid. What I really can't wait to do is to design some planes, though I probably won't design any planes until we get new models researched. I guess we already have the 1936 model, so we might as well add some better ones. Maybe we can make some cool cool recon planes with our photo reconnaissance. I've always wanted to research cameras in Hoi 4. Also, we are Italy too, so we will have to focus on a navy, and as you can see, the navy tab has been split into two, and the research for navy stuff has been tweaked a little bit. We better use our new planes, though, in Ethiopia, and it looks like there are several air regions here now, so we can't just put our planes up over the entire area. We have to be specific here. Or we can just send more planes over and then we don't have to be specific because we'll have enough planes so I can put the air up everywhere. Yeah, we want to conquer it fast too because if we fail this mission, we will escalate the war and lose political power and war support. I'm sure we should be able to push in the south specifically because these divisions are having supply issues. So it shouldn't be too difficult to break through here and encircle this division. I'm moving more divisions over from the mainland too because we have plenty of supply. And this is an interesting decision. You can get two civilian factories, eight steel, and a small military factory construction bonus, or one civilian factory and a civilian factory construction bonus. I think the one on the left is better, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'll do it though. I can think about it for an hour and decide which one is better later. Oh, and now we finally get to deal with the small new country. I guess we will send the ultimatum. Before we send the ultimatum, ultimatum though, I am going to put some divisions on their border because very bad things could happen with them attacking into those two tiles. We have a couple weeks for this event, so we'll just keep this here for a little while. I am on historical focuses, so it looks like historically they just accept annexation, which makes things easy. And now the front line is larger, which makes things more difficult for Ethiopia. We only have 60 days though to finish this up. Well, a lot more than 60 days to finish it up, but we have 60 days to finish it up if we want want the perfect war without any penalties given to us. And we got the event success in South Ethiopia. We at least avoid any terrible penalties if we fail in the north, which it only looks like we need to take one more province not to fail in the north. But if that happens, it's not as bad as failing in the north and the south. <laughs> and we got an event about the Italian people being angry about slow progress one day before they capitulated. Ah, uh, if we were one day faster, we could have saved 10% war support. But now here's yet another new mechanic, the new peace deal system. <laughs> we can submit our demands, which sounds very cool. 
Unfortunately, they don't have a navy for us to take, but that's a very, very nice new feature. Everything looks beautiful. I guess we'll prepare for our next target. Though Yugoslavia is guaranteed by quite a few people, so that might not be a good idea to go after them. And Mussolini is giving us another mission to do. I love doing missions for Mussolini. We are going to build a lot of plans, so we are going to build a lot of synthetic refineries. I'm not going to be stupid and forget about that. Ah, and I really like this operative. He has Syrian, Italian, and Ethiopian nationality and is a demolition expert, linguist, and commando. Two amazing operatives here. And we start off with two operative slots. We have this national spirit. That's very good. Maybe Italy can finally be the counter to the UK in terms of intelligence. And now we'll make Victor Emmanuel Emperor of Ethiopia. Yeah, to become an Italian empire, you first have to make someone the emperor of something. And there are a lot of focuses I want to do next. Starting down the historical path, which I think is the path that I want to do, seems like a good idea. A lot of these bonuses are good, especially damage to garrisons as resistance is kind of a problem right now. Devaluing our currency is nice. Now France doesn't have a monopoly on being able to devalue their currency in Hoi I also want to form this ministry, make military factories, or open up foreign affairs. I think the best thing to do though is probably get these two military factories, then I'll form the Ministry of Italian Africa, then I'll start down the political branch a little more, and then we can do Balkan ambition and send an ultimatum to Yugoslavia. And now Mussolini has commanded us to do something else, an industrialization program. We only need to build three civilian factories in a year, so that's good. And now here's another mechanic we have. Mussolini is getting more power. I don't want him to get too much power though because that minus daily army navy and air experience gain is not good. I really like it where we are right now. I don't want any more any loss. Also, we're naval power as Italy and with the new plane mechanics I almost feel like we have to research some carriers to use later on. I'll research carrier ones and carrier twos and then we can make a nice carrier. We also have now annexed Albania with the new and improved annex Albania focus and there's also a decision to release them as a puppet, but I think we'll directly occupy them for now. Either way, it's time to send the ultimatum to Yugoslavia. So yeah, not surprising they refuse. So they have chosen a worse fate. We get our annex war goal and we'll immediately declare. Okay, and this is the perfect situation for the war. We just need to capitulate Yugoslavia and then we can move into Romania. Romania has quite a few divisions, but not enough to defeat a major power. So we'll design our carry and then we'll design our carrier fighters. Somehow I, I don't think I've ever designed a carrier before, so this is also new. Well, I've actually designed carriers, but not in the game. I've designed carriers in mods, so I've technically made carriers in Hoi Forge, just not using this. Wait, anyway, there's the carrier. Time to make some carrier fighters or fighter naval bombers. The all-in-one plans. I, I don't think that's a good idea, but I guess we could do that. Oh no, weight exceeds the thrust. Okay. Um, yeah, let's, let's not do that. So we have our fighter and now I'll make our naval bomber and we'll start producing those for our carriers. Once our carriers are done, we should probably also make more dockyards so we can make more carriers. Anyways, Romania has capitulated and world tension is high enough that we can't be doing any other sneaky things besides building our sneaky carriers. The other major powers would be crazy to even assume that we would build these things. See, this is perfect. Now I'm building carriers that I designed light tanks that I designed, planes that I designed. This is the Hoi Four dream. Just can't wait for my carrier navy to fail. Also, we still have the worst tank division ever, so we need to fix this immediately. Uh, Italian tankettes, very cute. We'll make sure to get those. I'll have to delay the tankettes by a couple focuses though, because I want to do air innovations, get a research bonus for fighter models, and then use that research bonus to research the 1940 improved small airframe. 
time. I'll then do a similar thing for better ship models. Also, speaking of better ship models, I think our first carrier is gonna deploy in a few days. Yeah, there she is, the first Italian carrier equipped with the planes that we designed. So we'll have a new carrier model in 100 days, advanced light tanks in 230 days. Germany, I think, will declare on Poland very soon. And actually, as Italy too, we've never bought rubber from anyone. We've just used our own rubber, which is good. So once this fight starts, we won't be starved from rubber. We can keep producing our small aircraft, which I guess I should research the improved version of as soon as possible. And hopefully Germany declares a war. They're kind of just sitting on this war goal. Hmm, this is... New Germany, they've decided to spare Poland, but attack the Benelux first. Perfect. Okay, so we let Germany call us into the war. And we were able to get Malta and Cyprus and Greece. Not Egypt, though, but maybe we'll get that soon. Problem is, is that I, I never really researched Marines. I might just never research Marines and go straight for Amtraks and amphibious tanks. That's probably the best thing to do now. I also switched to base strike as Italy, which is maybe not the best idea because our focus tree doesn't give any buffs to base strike, but I already kind of went down the carrier path, so it's too too late to change my mind. Okay, here's our maybe final effort to take Egypt before I move to help Germany attack the Soviets, because if this fails, we probably shouldn't keep wasting our time over here. Yeah, we took El Alaman. That means that there's a chance that we can destroy all these divisions before they defeat these divisions that landed in El Alaman. If we don't, though, these all these divisions are encircled and we'll die. Looks like we'll land in Port Said, which is good. Yeah, this, this isn't good. It's not really an Italy game if we don't start losing stuff and run out of divisions. I guess we can make more divisions, I think. We have plenty of supplies. We'll just make an army for the Eastern Front if Germany needs it. Looks like they're doing really bad, so we might have to carry this game. Okay, so uh, we kind of now finally have control over the entire Mediterranean. The Soviets decided to throw a whole bunch of subs in the Mediterranean and are sinking German convoys there, but I'm not at war with the Soviets yet, so I can't really deal with that. I still want to take Gibraltar though and London, but first I still need to finish researching Amtraks. I've also encircled the British twice in the same place here now, so that is always fun. I love it when you encircle them in a place, then they push you back out of the place, and then they get encircled in the same place again. And as long as Free France doesn't take this soon, we'll encircle a lot of divisions here once we take these tiles. Anyways, we finished capitulating Norway for Germany. I think we should probably also occupy it for them, because I think that if we leave, they are going to immediately push Germany out of Norway. I also have put divisions on the border with the Soviets, so I think I'm just going to do it and accept the call to arms now. We can maybe even attack into the Soviet Union. This is crazy. The Soviets, they naval invaded Norway. They're naval invading here. They're naval invading my islands. I... I don't know what to do. We're going to have to invade Turkey just to make sure that the Soviets can't invade me. Wait, bicycle battalions? Yeah, this is this is what we need to finally win. We'll naval invade with the bicycle battalions. I can just see them landing on the shores with their bicycles and riding into Gibraltar. Anyways, uh, I am building these Amtraks. Hopefully they'll be finished soon and then I'll use them and then we'll finally secure the Mediterranean. Well, except from the Soviets. I really don't want to invade Turkey right now. We encircled some Soviet divisions. Not many, but anything helps. Germany is not doing well. We are going to have to carry the war. Vichy France is in it now, though, which is very good because now we can station planes in Morocco and attack Gibraltar with a lot of cast. And I think we have seven carriers or six carriers. So plenty of planes can also be on the carriers, too, and we can put our entire navy in this tile here. That's what I want to do. I just want to take Gibraltar now. Well, 
I'll take Gibraltar and then we'll go for the UK. Just because I know that the UK and the US probably have a ton of naval invasions planned on Germany. And Germany isn't defending so well. Just set our planes over Gibraltar. I guess I need to deploy some new casts. Let's see. This general has amphibious. He's the perfect guy for the job. Doesn't look like we're gonna land though. It was a nice try. Oh, never mind. We did the land. This is good. Now we'll attack the UK itself. At this point in the game, they'll have a ton of divisions there, but I'm ready. I, I don't want to sit around and just defend Africa for the next three years. No, we're gonna do this ourselves. Okay, we have naval supremacy in the English Channel, so I think it's time that we try this. First, I'm just gonna check, and it doesn't look like they have any divisions on their ports. Yeah, this this is it isn't gonna be good for them. Hungary finally joined us. They had a war goal on Germany, so I had to keep troops permanently on their border, but now that they're in our faction, I can finally move those divisions away. Yeah, there's no British divisions in Britain. There's at least some American divisions that are defending this port here. And now that we control the UK mostly, we're going to grant Roman citizenship to everyone in all of our colonies. I think this includes occupied colonies that we don't own yet. Maybe it doesn't. I'm not sure. We're going to do the decision anyway because it's cool. We already have a lot of compliance in places like Romania and Yugoslavia and all of our colonies in Africa, so that's good and hopefully we'll be able to build it up on Britain. We really need to only occupy France now though to realize Roman ambitions and Spain and Tur never, never. And instead of war propaganda, we have these unique propaganda decisions that bolster our war support through defeating enemies. I don't know if this is for all countries or just for Italy. I'll have to see as I play different countries in the new um, update and DLC. Anyways, we're having a difficult time defeating the Soviets here, so I'm just going to naval invade behind them, take the port, and then they won't have any supply. Hopefully we don't lose this naval invasion um, and lose all these divisions but if we do, we can always naval invade later with Amtraks. Okay, so now we're going through the steps of the Italian master plan, okay? We, we mostly ignored the Soviets until now. We just attacked Saudi Arabia and are now attacking, I guess, the Soviets' puppet, so kind of attacking them. But we've just been doing our own thing, not really doing any giant battle plans, while letting Germany do a ton of battle plans so they weaken themselves. So eventually when we win, they'll be very, very weak. If we want to form Rome, we have to have all of France, and there's no way that we can get all of France without declaring on Germany at some point, unless Vichy France gets kicked out of the faction and we somehow annex all of the German territory here. Japan's also doing kind of well, and part of my plan might be joining Japan's faction and then justifying on Germany. Like in a long time though, we still have to take out the United States after all, <laughs> before we can even leave the faction and attack Germany. And it took a little while, but we were able to um, combine our forces from Africa pushing north from Iran and the forces in Romania pushing east and the Soviets should capitulate soon. We've done a good job. We control the skies. I think our navy is now maybe the strongest in the world. Maybe. As we gain compliance in the UK, we keep getting access to more and more UK dockyards that we use to make more and more carrier fours. I think we're up to 14 carriers and hopefully we'll make a few more if we invade the United States eventually. Ah perfect and here we are the first peace deal we're in with more than one country. Oh there's contested demands. Everybody wants Bessarabia. Anyways it's 1946 so that's all for today. We ended off with 16 Italian carriers. We control a lot of territory including all of Britain. Remember to check out that link if you guys want to get the DLC for yourself. I enjoyed it and I will see you all next time.